Securing the end of the war is the tenth and final point of President Volodymyr Zelensky peace formula. It is too early to talk about any document that will stop the war and force Russia to peace, experts say. As world well practice shows, negotiations will most likely take place with the participation of other countries, guaranteeing their security in the region. These can be both individual states or international organizations such as the UN. This can be done either with the help of intermediaries, that is, when the state or international organizations act as mediators and help, let's say, Ukraine and Russia reach a compromise on this issue. But I think that, first of all, this is some kind of bilateral agreement that should fix everything. And what is important here is not so much the issue of ending the war. I don't think that it will sound like that in the agreement. But what is important is the settlement of all issues. One of the main conditions for ending the war is the withdrawal of Russian troops to the internationally recognized borders of Ukraine in 1991. However, it is rather a rhetorical question whether the current political regime in the Kremlin will ever recognize the territorial integrity of Ukraine. While Putin is in power, he is unlikely to make any concessions. This war will definitely last while he is in power. A window of opportunity will open with a change of power. This is true, but not for long, because for about five years Russia will be similar to Germany after the First World War. This is a revanchist country that will demand revenge. A prerequisite for fulfilling the tenth point of the peace formula is that Ukraine must win on the battlefield, experts are sure. After all, a conversation with Russia, which understands only the language of force can only begin with the position of a winner. Then Kyiv will be able to dictate the conditions for restoring peace, for example disarmament of the border zone, control by international partners over the Federation's nuclear arsenal and payment of reparations. Historical practice shows that such conditions are possible. Of course, this is necessarily a question of reparations. That is, without them, I think that such an agreement will not work. Too much harm was caused by Russia, and Russia must pay not only morally, but also financially. Regarding the possibility of some, not so much loss of territory, but some kind of division, of reduction of armed forces. There are examples. Let me remind you that after World War II, the division of Germany was one of the measures of responsibility for the outbreak of war by Germany. The war against Ukraine is not the first Russian military aggression against neighboring countries, therefore relying on the goodwill of the Kremlin to comply with international law after the end of the war is dangerous, experts warn. Returning to the experience of the First World War, well, they forced Germany to reduce the army to 100,000. They actually deprived them of the entire fleet and heavy weapons. But the Germans violated that. What is the mechanism to force them to do this? Moreover, Russia is a nuclear state. There should be some other approaches here, some kind of demilitarized zones in theory. But again, what happens if they violate them? What will be the punishment? Here, you know, the main thing that we must consolidate is the sanctions regime. The sanctions regime should not be lifted from Russia for the next 30 years, or better, 50 years. In addition to compliance with the sanctions regime, Russia's diplomatic isolation should not weaken. The Federation must be punished for the deaths of thousands of people and the destruction of hundreds of Ukrainian cities since the beginning of military aggression in 2014. Reported by Diana Kolesnik, Larissa Zubenko, UOTV News.